Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Retro Gaming with Hopper. Today we're going to start working on a Rockola jukebox. This is a Rockola 477. You can see it's been sitting, been sitting for a little while. Got a nice layer of dust on it. Overall this one's in pretty good shape. We got a you know, one little chunk missing out of the plastic here on the top and uh, the overlay here is kind of kind of bubbled up in a few spots uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with that or not I may it's a nice jukebox plays 45's you can see it's in really really nice shape If I'm not mistaken, this one was made in 80. I'll have to, I can look that up a little better. Oh, shit. As you can see, it's in pretty good shape. This holds, uh, I, th uh, I think, yeah, about 197. They probably call it 200 records or 200 songs, probably 100 records. Yeah, I don't mind the noise. That's, that's the volunteer fire department. That's, something's going on. Now, shut this off while that rings and then we'll finish up this section okay if you haven't guessed I I live pretty close to the to the fire hall it's only about a quarter of a mile down the road from me uh, as I was saying the Rockola 477 this one is not a a full mechanical this one does have solid state boards in it for for selections and positioning of everything everything is here we got our the coin Mac everything is with this one so I don't have to hunt anything down now the this has a hit tracker which uh, tracks the most popular record played on the machine and as you can see, I think we got a little, I think we, I think that's a battery probably in there on the board that's kind of blowed out. And we'll have to take a look at that and pull that off and see if we need to change a battery or what the heck's going on there. But I don't think we're going to have to do too much to this. I think we're just going to basically have, have to clean up the mechanism. Because when you turn it on... It automatically goes to 247 or 102. Now watch this. It just rolls right over. And as you can see, it kind of drags and does some funky things really slow. That's all it does. They have it set on free play, so there's 99 plays on this. Uh, let's see. And it does return home. But if you try and you make a selection, 183, oops, reset, 183, it'll move through. And it'll stop at right where it's supposed to. Picks up the record. And it just kind of moves. So there's not enough tension on the needle. But we, I do see. 
see we do have some we do have uh, some sound so we know we're pretty good with that we'll cancel that and see I don't like that way it just kind of drags across the, the record uh, and so I'm sure I'm hoping we just got a gummed up mechanism and we can get this mechanism all cleaned up and she'll start working like she should but every time you turn it on as soon as you turn it on it goes to that one certain record and puts it on but as you can see the more you select and use it it starts getting a little better a little better so that's just telling me that the the mechan is just gummed up years and years of just uh, oil and it does look like somebody did try and oil it up and they probably had it working when it's a little warmer it probably works a little better when it's warmer it's another cool cool day out here today but I got some big, our big old speakers in it so I'm sure this is going to be pretty a pretty nice little jukebox once we get it. Get see if I can get the. Oh come on! But let me. Let's get started on this. First of all, let's get this cleaned up. I don't know. You know our. All of our ditches, all of our displays are lighting up. So we know that's all okay. Uh, we won't really know what the what condition the amp's in until I can actually play a record and listen to it and see if if everything is there. And see this one's pretty neat. It's got a profit setter on it, so you can all it is is dip switches. You set dip switches to to play like uh, two plays for a quarter and three plays for 75 or four plays for 75 you can set that all up that way uh, you can even add a play on this so it yeah you know, so if you every time you put so much money into it it'll uh, give you even more selections but that uh, see total selections 97,999 so the, so it has been played a few times and we do have a counter down below here too which has 49,000 on it I want to get this front opened up so you can see the front of this but this one Kind of helps if you have both hands. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me open that up and we'll take a look at the speakers and all that. There we go. See, this one's got two big woofers on the bottom and two mid ranges on the top. You've got your mid ranges and your woofers down below. That's the crossover down below. And your crossover for your speakers and the crossover what the crossover does is it separates the frequencies for the for the bass which go to your woofers and then it separates uh, the mid-range which, which goes up to your mid-range speakers I don't see any tweeters in this so this is only a two two stage so you have your woofers and tweeters and as you can see we have our uh, electronic encoder and we have our electronic uh, selector. This is what uh, tells the tells it when to stop for each individual record. Instead of the on the older rock is and that you had that big big wiper wheel on over here with all the contacts on it, and that's when it, it told you what it when to stop and when not to. 
for each individual record. This one is a lot a little newer, so it, it it's going to be a little more electronics and uh, less switches, which can be good for some, not too good for others. Just depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to do. If you just want a, a great jukebox for for the home, for your man cave, I know I keep saying man cave, whatever. If you just want a great jukebox, the, this 477 is going to be an excellent jukebox for the house. Or it can even go out on location in a, in a retro place where you know, instead of CD jukeboxes, we, we put the 45 jukeboxes in, in a retro place. It will be like a nice uh, old style retro uh, pizza shop or even a bar. People still love to listen to vinyl. Uh, vinyl is starting to come back again because it, it does have a, a warmer and sounds a lot better. Than, than the digital. Digital to me is just a little too tinny. I like the, the vinyl because it's a lot warmer. And we got a got a big box of extra records with this too and some 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 labels. So we got a nice big box of records here we can go through. We can go through those and I'll show you what's in there and and what's actually in it as far as record wise goes uh, if you noticed uh, uh, the 183 I punched in was uh, that uh, Daniels guy with uh, some some sort of somebody that goes down to Georgia and I'm not going to mention it because I don't want to get hit with copyright infringement so that's the whole problem with working on these jukeboxes and putting them on YouTube, uh, the work on YouTube, because you get it all fixed up, but you got to find a record that or a song that's not uh, copyrighted. <laughs> or you can, I guess you could go buy the song so that everybody could listen to it on, uh, on YouTube. And we also, we got the manuals with this. Imagine that. I mean, service information. Yeah, we get our uh, model 477 phonograph hunter 160 series service manual. And I mean, this thing, it this this manual is nice. It's got everything in it. It's got the breakdown of everything in here. Plus. We get the domestic and export wiring diagrams. All the wiring diagram is in here. Nice, nice. And a parts catalog. What do you think? You think we can just call these people up and order order some parts for this? But that's that's our Rockola 477. Uh, like I said, the first thing we're going to tackle is we're going to tackle cleaning that mech and see if we can't get it to act right. So let me get everything all set up here and we'll get down and we'll start cleaning that. And I'll show you how I'm going to clean it. I don't know how everybody else cleans it, but I'll show you how I'm going to clean it up. Okay, folks, I decided to go ahead and pull the whole mech out to clean it, get it all cleaned up. That's, that was kind of the plan all along, but I was looking at it, and yeah, it would be easier if I just pull it out of there. Okay, removed all the records. And, okay, to remove this one, you have these bolts that run up through here. And up through the top, come up through here, and then there's a little little retainer that sits and it goes right on the groove of that bolt once it comes up through, so you, it can't vibrate and, and fall out because those have to be loose when you're playing the machine uh, to transport it. You screw them all the way up, and it sucks the 
uh, whole mechanism down and, and so it doesn't jiggle around while you're moving it. Okay, took off uh, the encoder. That way it doesn't, I don't damage it while I'm taking it out. And then the other box in the back. I took that one off the back side too. And you have to remove all the plugs. We have a couple big ones. There's one here. And there's a smaller one in the back. Those are sitting right there. Remove those. Remove your plug right here. Wire that goes right in, in here. Remove that one and make darn sure you remove this little guy right here. The pickup input goes right in there and there's a ground wire. In the back it, it's grounded to the to the mech itself and then the wire runs all the way up to your pickup to your needle. Make sure you unplug that and fish it out from behind there. Uh, you, once you undo the ground it looks like okay you undo the ground now it can come out but that one runs all the way up to the amp so you have to make sure take that one out or now you have to find a new wiring harness if you don't because those are little ass wires that are in there and you really don't want to try and sit down and repair them so make sure you take them out and after you get all that done you're you're ready to pull this the whole mech out now to bring the mech out you see we have the big opening here through here but that you can't pull it straight out because of your uh, yeah this guy here <laughs> I'll think of the name of it here in a minute so we're gonna have to pick this up we'll pick the whole unit up move it over a little bit and bring it right on out that way we can get at everything clean everything look at check everything and make sure everything's in good condition and not worn we don't have to get anything for the Mac so with that I'm ready to pull that Mac out of there we'll pull that whole mechanism out of there and take a look at it so we'll come back as soon as I get that out well, folks, there it is. <clears throat> I got the mech mechanism up here on the on my little sawhorses and a crappy old uh, crappy old board here. We're going to get this cleaned up. Uh, what happens over time with oil? If you don't know, I'll let you know that um, the solvents or the whatever kind of dissipates out of the oil and it dries out and it you end up with kind of a, a wax which is uh, naturally in the oils if you ever run Quaker State you'll know you'll know what I mean and it leaves a kind of a waxy a waxy buildup on everything and then dirt collects in it and then it starts gumming up everything everything wants to move real stiff because of the wax is just holding everything back so what we got to do is we got to clean as much of that out of it as we can without actually tearing down the whole mechanism. I really don't want to do that. Uh, but we are going to pull the motors. We have one motor here. And one motor right up under here. We're going to pull them off and take the cover off of the gearbox. And clean it out and put some fresh grease in it. Because I know it's going to be all hard and, and waxy. We'll get that, get those two done. And we'll, like I said, we'll get these shafts and everything cleaned up and oiled. And probably some light, light grease on the, on the gears back here. As you can see, it's, it's kind of a waxy. So we'll, we'll get that all cleaned up and put some light light grease on it. Might use some lithium on it. That'll help it a lot. And hopefully everything will free up and we can 
and the mech will work properly then afterwards. What's nice on these is there's a little there's a little uh, spline sticking out from the bottom of the motors and you can turn them and move the mech wherever you need it. So I can move it back and forth and I can get everything cleaned up and then oiled up. Then also we can vacuum out the bottom of the the box and we can get everything all cleaned up in there too. And while I was looking at this and working on this I see that somebody spot welded a spot here and right there. So they were having some problems with that supports flexing too much and I don't think that's factory there's one back there too because that looks like somebody just got in here with a with a MIG and just zapped those that seam together which was probably pretty smart so the the Mac is a little little more stable in it that was probably a weak point on these don't know for sure. I'm sure somebody will tell me if it is. So yeah, we can get that all cleaned up. We can get the whole inside of this all cleaned up. Get that mech cleaned up and lubed. So get those gearboxes taken apart. Take the covers off of them. And check the gears and everything in them. And probably re-grease them. And clean it all up. And then we'd, we'd be yeah, we'll be ready to put it back in. So let's get started on this back. I'm gonna first. I'm gonna pull the motors. We'll pull those two motors and put them on the bench, and we'll pull the covers off of them and take a look at everything inside of them and see what they're like. And that'll take me probably about 45 minutes. But with the magic of video. We'll be, you'll be right back to see what I'm doing, and I'll show you. What's nice about removing these motors is you got three bolts. You have one here, here, and here. Undo the plug, and it just pulls right up out of there. Same with the one on the bottom. You take the three bolts down off the pan, and the gear pulls right off, and you have them off. It's one of the simplest designs there are. It is for those. Now on these motors, you can see they they look identical, but there's two different part numbers. See on this one, this is the one that goes underneath that drives the basket and everything is 52502-A, 28 volt DC, original motor, Rockola. Well, it's no aftermarket. These are probably the original motors. And then over here on this one, this is the one that goes up top that drives the mech and everything, is 52499-A, still 28 volt. Now the only thing I can figure the difference is, is we have two different size gears on them, which, you know, is really no, no big deal because you can you know you get the motor you could put the gear on it unless the shafts a little longer or different or one of these has been changed out and one of them's a newer and we have our filter cap put these filter caps on these motors so your amp doesn't pick up any static or uh, motor noise off of the motors very important to keep those on and what was weird is both of these were loose I tightened that one up but you can see this one that one's loose and that bolt for the end cap is loose now interesting I guess it might be because just from vibration of the Mac always working but who knows so let's let's get one of these taken apart. Get the 
at least get the cap off of the off of the gearbox and we'll take a look and see what kind of condition it's in. Don't mind my rusty screwdriver. Not everybody has the money to spend on all brand new tools. And I, I cheated too before I uh, started this segment. I loosened up all the screws. <laughs> I didn't take it off, but I loosened up the screws so I could do this with one hand. I said this is a this is a nice jukebox. It's a solid state. And not much to the mechanism, just a lot of a lot of gears, shafts, cams. It all need cleaned up. Come on. Oh, let me let me see if I can get a hold of that with one hand here and get him opened up. No. Okay, let me let me stop right here and we'll I'll get that off and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, surprisingly the grease is still really nice and soft. So we're not going to have to repack or do anything. I may, I'll put some, some more new grease in there and yeah, that, that grease is still, still good. Surprising, but this one isn't isn't as old as some of them that I've been into. And if you're wondering what the, what this top. Uh, nut and screw is for that's to adjust the motor when there's some when there's play in it uh, you can adjust it to tighten up that motor and neither one of these have any any play in them very little anyway so I'm not even gonna mess with those but I'll, I'll get the get everything all tightened back up on these uh, put a little grease in there and uh, I know I didn't mention but I always always mark my motors where they came off the B on that meaning it, that's, this one goes on the bottom of the unit but I always mark them so I know where to put them where they go back on so I don't have to you know this it's not too bad with this when you have two different size gears but if uh, you know you try and put this one on the top it's not going to fit because it adds a smaller gear but this one you could put underneath and find out oh shit it's the wrong one got to take it back off and and put it where it belongs. So I always mark them so I know where they go back on. It's just kind of smart that way. It just saves you some time and, and headaches. So I'll get these cleaned up. I'll check this one out and if I find anything weird in that one I'll, I'll come back and show you that and then we'll, I'm going to leave these off while I clean the mech up and we'll get started on cleaning that mech up. All right, here's what I was talking about with old grease. This is this is an old can of Quaker steak that I've had had around forever, and you can see how stiff that gets. You know, it, it you can still use it for some stuff, but it it gets stiff after a lot of the solvents, or I don't know if it's really solvents or or whatever kind of kind of evaporate out of it I mean it doesn't feel bad but it, it it's pretty stiff 
and that's what I mean what happens on the on these mechs and anything where you have grease that's going to be exposed for a long period of time it it dries out and it just turns waxy you can see it it it's stiff and when you have stiff grease and uh, the, everything has to work harder so that's what I mean by uh, stiff waxy grease okay this is the the motor for the mech and as you can see that the grease is all all up on the gear and it's not doing anything down here on our worm gear and there's dry spots on the on the gear so the, the all the grease was kinda has congregated up or when they put it in they just kind of laid it a, a ribbon of it on there and you can see all it's doing is just keeping the, the top here all lubricated but we like I said we got some dry spots up on our gear up through here and I'm and that worm gear is just kind of has a light coating of oil looking on it if I can get in there And you can see that gear is dry. So I'll dissipate this grease all over the place and and get it where it's uh, actually lubricating the gear and not just uh, the, the top of the gear. That can cause some, uh, some funky sounds, uh, just some little noise out of this motor. That's why the grease needs to be down on that worm gear and on that main gear. And once it's lubricated then you have a lot more it, it's a lot quieter and you're not going to have some premature wearage on it but that that's kind of common I've seen it before where you pull these apart and the, the grease is just laying all on top of the the motor and not actually down down in here where it belongs and and there's not a and it, it's soft so we'll get it we'll get this one lubed up so it'll hopefully it'll run quieter and that may take care of you know just quiet the quiet everything down just a little bit more all right there I even packed some more grease in there some new grease in there even this this uh, bushing well, it's a bearing bushing I always assume a bearing has rollers in it and a bushing is just a sleeve but anyway it was dry nothing in it so I got that all lubed up packed all my grease down there on that worm gear so when it comes around it'll actually lube up the the main gear and the worm gear up really well that should help it and we'll have a little quieter motor and maybe it won't have to labor quite so much to to run so I'll get finished up here and then we'll get started on cleaning the mech. Alright, after checking both of these motors, see this one, how nice and tight. Nice and tight that one is. This one, it's got quite a bit of play in it. And what we're going to do is now I'll show you how to uh, adjust these up. What you do is loosen up your jam nut. And then hold your jam nut tight in your screw. Until it bottoms out. That one doesn't want to bottom out. A lot more wear on that than what, what I thought. getting there hope I got enough adjustment in this there now it's all the way tight now after you run your screw in all the way tight back it out a quarter of a turn 
and tighten up your jam nut. And now, took all the slop out of it. Now it should be good to go. Like I said, that one was war a lot more than what I thought. That was the one that uh, all the grease was um, just laying on top of the gear and not on the worm gear or the main gear. So you can see it, uh, it had a lot of wear in it from not having enough grease in it. But now we should be good to go. Nice and tight. Just like this one. So that's how you adjust them up. It's just like a steering box on a on a car, on an old car. And if you've ever screwed around with a, you know, working on your 70s, 80s car where the, you had too much play and your steering wheel would, you know, your steering wheel would be all back and forth where you had to go down the road sawing on the steering wheel. And it's the same thing. Uh, it has the same principle on it big jam nut with a screw down through the center of it. You just loosen up your jam nut and screw that down in and it tightens everything up and then takes takes that sawing motion out of your steering wheel while it takes the slop out of your out of your motor. So that'll help a lot. That may take care of the problem where it was uh, putting the record off to the side just a little bit and then falling down onto the onto the turntable itself that may have been what the problem was but we'll see it was either it's because it's just all gummy and stiff or this motor was had needed some adjustments done to it but that's how you adjust the motors on them all right now we're going to start cleaning up this mechanism um, usually what i like to use is some some contact cleaner <clears throat> i get this stuff by the case so i can uh, yeah, I'll use it for just about anything because it's electrical, electrical gla grade, glade, electrical grade cleaning solvent. Effectively removes oil, grease, dirt, dust. Excellent on tuners, switches, relays, and connectors, etc. And it'll also clean up a lot of, a lot of the grease, and that comes off with this, this stuff. Uh, usually, it has a hose. I'll have to. Usually I get a case of this stuff and I never get a hose with it. And so while I'm cleaning this, uh, you guys will get to listen to some music. Oh, another thing what's nice, once you remove the motor, you can move the mech by hand. And that sucker is so stiff. So hopefully we can get it cleaned up and it'll start freeing up.
sorry about that folks my battery went dead in my camera okay we got her all cleaned up and as you can see this doesn't take much effort at all now to to get that to work so now all I got to do is I'll oil it up a little bit get some oil on it we'll get the motors put back in and we'll be ready for it to go back in the in the jukebox so let me go ahead I'll get this oiled up and get the motors in it and we'll come back and look at everything once we I get it that far so far everything looks good uh, I haven't run, run into anything that looks worn except for the one motor needed adjusted and we adjusted it and it just needs cleaned up and and oiled so hang in there and we're getting close to being done with the mech okay it's all all oiled up motors are put back in it all cleaned up uh, I put a little bit of white lithium on on the gears didn't go heavy with it just enough so when it starts running it'll it'll spread it all around and that's about all you need you don't have to worry too much about gobbing big gobs of grease on those they're gonna they'll be fine uh, everything else looks good that's ready to go back into the back in the cabinet so uh, this little video has been this video has been long enough I think we'll go ahead and cut this off here and but before we do I'll let you know everything that we've done we've uh, pulled the mechanism the mech out of the cabinet got it up on the on the table here we got her all cleaned up and oiled adjusted the one motor that was uh, pretty loose uh, oiled uh, and some light grease on the, on the gears everything's all ready to go it's all ready to go back in and hopefully that'll take care of our problem now when I was uh, as I was cleaning it and oil it and all that I was running it by hand and it comes all the way down it'll set the record down and the arm goes over and goes all the way down now so it was I'm hoping it was just something gummed up we won't know for sure until we get it in the in the cabinet and get it fired up and and see what it does yeah we'll have to load it back up with records I took all the records out of it hopefully I stacked them in the right order so I can just put them right back in the way I took them out <laughs> and then I don't have to sit there and go through every one of them and with the uh, board and and match them all up to their individual hole <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button for more of these great uh, video of arcade machines pinball machines uh, jukeboxes and whatever else I can dig up to work on we'll we'll do some more videos on on whatever I have more videos coming up uh, second episode of this one will be up probably in a few days because uh, I think we're going to be able to finish this up pretty quick. There wasn't a whole hell of a lot wrong with it. And, yeah. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See ya.